Hey, what's going on guys? Legend here, bringing you another video. This one's going to be talking about how to improve your aim ready for Halo Infinite. This can also work with other Halo games that's out right now on PC, uh, Master Chief Collection, so Halo 3, Halo 4, you know, whatever you're into. Okay, so this is going to be using something called a name trainer, and this one is free. So a lot of people know about Kovacs as like the sort of main aim trainer. However, that costs money. It's more of a customized experience. This one is actually backed with data science and it lets you know exactly what you're doing wrong. So you're going to want to go to the Steam store and just type in aim lab. Then you're going to want to install it. So once that's installed, you're going to want to go to it and open it up. It's still early access, still early days, but it's backed in data science. Lots of researchers use it and this is the way to go. Now that the application's installed, let's take a look at the user interface before we jump into any training features. So, first of all, you can see there's bronze to grandmaster ranks, and each rank has four different ranks within it. Uh, these are cumulative, so it'll be based on your total overall stats. Um, so you have flicking, which is like a sniper rifle when you've got to whip your aim to someone, so if you're trying to no-scope them, basically. Uh, tracking, this is the bread and butter of Halos, where you've got to keep your aimer on them. Uh, this is the most difficult thing for keyboard and mouse users to do in comparison to controller because controller with the aim assist kind of keeps your aim sort of glued to the target a bit. Um, that's a lot harder to do with uh, keyboard and mouse, especially with the high time to kill of Halo. That's where it's very difficult for them to do. Uh, speed is just how quickly you react to things. Precision is self-explanatory. Then perception and cognition. This is where it gets interesting. So this game has things to train your game awareness and also how you react to different cues. So for example, cognition has a feature where it will play different enemies at different targets in different angles from you. So say from behind you and it'll play an audio cue and you have to turn on and shoot it. The quicker you do it, the better you are at it. So it helps you with that. And there's also one then for perception. So say now you're going around a corner in Halo or any other game and then you see like three or four enemies. This is what helps you decide with your target, uh, your target acquisition, which one you're going to shoot. Because you could see a teammate, you could see an enemy, but if they're both standing next to each other and there's, and there's also a few other people there and you're, and you're in a stressful environment, you know what I mean? It can be quite difficult to determine which one you need to shoot, and this one helps with that as well. Um, just, just things like that. It's very useful. So, as you can see, you can even have playlists. You can go to the workshop because this actually has a new creator update where you can actually make your own maps, your own scenarios, and you can customize the sort of enemies they have and the features of the enemies, like the health and stuff like that. Um, for, for this video, though, we're just going to stick to the basics uh, because this is what will help you improve the most. So, now that we've done that, Let's look at some, let's look at some uh, training, but before we can do the training, we got to set it up properly. So let's move on to the settings. So to do the settings, you want to go to the settings option at the bottom and you can see there's like different profiles. This one's currently on Fortnite, but if you just select this, it'll come up with all different games. It'll have Quake, Gears of War, Grand Theft Auto even. You want to select the Halo series and more specifically, you want to select Halo the Master Chief Collection. Uh, this is where you can set your different settings. Uh, so it's currently set to sort of like mouse settings at base, but they're actually also controller settings. So this is actually your horizontal settings, uh, the X axis. This is what you would normally put in the, the horizontal on below. Um, so select that to what you want it to be. You can change your field of view. The default for Halo is 78. However, most people on PC play about 100 field of view. You do not want to go above 105. 105 is the maximum. 100 is recommended. Some players like Snipe Down play 104. However, anything above 105 and it will become distorted and long distance enemies become very difficult to shoot. And you may even get some motion blur sickness. So you then have the Y axis. So you want to change this from Force 1 to 1 to use game settings. You can do your dead zones. You can set it to the default for Xbox or you can also add your own custom dead zones. You want this to be on raw input. And there's also more advanced features, but we're just going to stick with the basic features for now. So this by here is the horizontal for controller or the X axis for your mouse. You can also set your ADS speed. Some Halo games have this feature, some do not. It'll probably be there for Halo Infinite, but use that at your own disposal and your own choice. Moving on, now that we've done the settings, you can go to your crosshair and customize the type of crosshair you have. This is uh, what mine looks like. You can get it, you can change colors, you can make it look like whatever you want. And also then you also have features here where you can change the graphics. Make sure it's at your, the correct resolution and frame rate. And also the refresh rate to match it. So as you can see, mine's set at 144 hertz. I've got it set to low latency. And I've also capped the frames. You don't want it unlimited because then it'll overwork your graphics card and it's just no point. 
But you don't want it set at your exact frame rate, you want to set it just above. So I have mine set to 160. Um, you can decide here whether you want certain features on and things like that. And finally, you can also sort out the sort of player avatar you have, um, the color of your targets, and you can also decide on which kind of camera mode you want. So you want yours to be first person. Okay? You can decide whether you want the weapon on. I preferred it off, purely because I don't like the weapon models. But they do have a large collection of weapon models and some skins you can download if you want those. So now that that's done, you can also do your key binds if you're on keyboard and mouse, but it's, it's not really necessary. You can even change your controller ones to match more specific, but I prefer to keep it as is. So time to move on to the actual training. Okay, so we're now on the training tab. This is where it suggests different tasks based on your current result. It'll tell you which one it feels would be more suitable to progress your ability in training. We're going to go to home here and we're going to go to tasks. And this lets you see the different tasks you have for training. And it's also separated by each different type. So ultimate, by here as you see in the mode, ultimate is a combination of speed, precision, and overall score. Whereas, as you can track anything. So with speed, for example, as the mode, and this will focus more on how quickly you can acquire your target and kill it. Um, whereas precision is more worried about actually hitting your target without missing shots in contrast to actually making sure you're doing it quickly. So the, the good thing is though is that a lot of these different game modes have different things you can use to help you improve in game. So this one helps with detecting enemies in the corner of your peripherals. So this is the audio spatial I talked about previously. They'll play a sound and then you have to react. This is going to be your bread and butter for Halo is your tracking. This is the most important thing for Halo. Because your aim's constantly on them, you want to be able to track them as they're strafing and shoot them while you do so. So these are the very important sort of things to train. Strafe track, this is going to be your main one. Uh, and you can also combine that with strafe shot. This will be the best one for you. This trains the horizontal tracking. However, as you know in Halo, there's a lot of vertical tracking because of jumping around. And with Halo Infinite, there's going to be a grappling hook. You're basically going to have someone on the map who's like Spider-Man. So you need to be able to track vertically as well. So what you want to do for that one is go for something like sphere track. This one will go all the way around the room. It'll do a 360 and it'll also it'll be in varying heights. So this is the one you want to want to focus on if you're going to be going for verticality. So you want to make a playlist really that contains strafe track, strafe shot, sphere track, and things like that. You can also get more specific with your training. So for example, if you're talking about sniping, you can go to, it depends where you want to work on. So let's talk about speed, okay? So you can go down to sniper shot. And as you can see, this one's good for practicing your actual sniper shot. And this one's more about how quickly you can snipe them. So you want to focus on these sort of things. Flicking if you want to practice your no-scope, this one's good. Micro shot is a very good one. This one's very good for making sure you're able to hit the quick headshots you need to hit sometimes if someone's weak. Or if you want to hit your no-scope, this one's really good. As well as reflex shot. This one just works out how quickly you can react to different enemies appearing. And it also at different sizes. So you have to change up the way you aim and react every time. Cognition. This one helps you decide which enemy you need to shoot. So which we need to prioritize. And this one trains your overall capacity to remember the map. So say now you're running and you see a guy bottom mid or something like that. And you also have your teammates there. Sometimes you may not remember that there's a guy there. Because you're too busy focusing on something else. Or you may get distracted. This is about training that. Highly recommend the most important thing would be strafe track, strafe shot, spear track. And then you can just mix in the sort of stuff you need to then to work on. So if you need to work on your speed a bit, you could add in some things like you can work on your sniper shot. Micro shot is really good. I'd recommend it. Grid shot is more of a flex, but this one can be fun. This one's good for warming up in my opinion. And flicking can be useful. The good thing about flicking is that it can be used for one shots. It can be used for sniping. It can even be used for things like shotguns and rocket kills. So line trace I would recommend for this. And also multi-line trace, that's what I'd recommend as well because you got a lot of enemies with the caddy, so you kind of want to be able to mix up and trace as they're going around. So this one I'd recommend as well. And you also have the ultimate version of Sniper Shot here where it combines speed and also precision. And the final thing I would say is that you can look into custom scenarios you can make or you can look for currently made ones. Um, there's not really any specifically for Halo currently, so that's something I may work on at some point. But I'd recommend making up your own scenarios for it. So now we're going to look at actual schedule okay so in terms of schedule for this what you want to do is put it into two different components so first of all warm-ups and the second then is the actual aim training before you get on you want to spend about 10 15 minutes warming up you don't want to spend longer than that because you're almost starting to get tired it'll get a bit repetitive and it'll just affect your overall gameplay it becomes more like training so 10 to 15 minutes to warm up you can then just jump on and play the most important thing though is you also implement actual training into your routine so training you want it to be about 30 to 60 minutes 
And this one can be more targeted towards like specific areas, like I've mentioned, like speed, perception, wherever you feel like you need to work on the most. With that, a lot of the big aim trainers recommend that you actually do your aim training before your session, because after your session, you're generally worn out. Yeah, you're too tired. You got, you know, real life things. So the good way to do it is if you play multiple times a day is to do, say, a 10, 15 minute warm up at the start. Play some games for a couple of hours or however long you're on. Take a break or get some food, do some work, go to the gym, you know, whatever. And then once you're back, then do your aim training session for 30 to 60 minutes and then jump on for your actual session, whether it's scrims or just regular matchmaking, ranked gameplay. However, though, on tournament days, you do not want to do training. You just want to stick to warming up. Quick 10, 15 minute warm up and then straight in the game because the whole point of the aim training is that it teaches you good habits but it also teaches you about your bad habits and this is what we're going to look at next okay so now we're going to look at understanding your bad habits and also how the game can help you with them this is the biggest part of this game because this game is built by researchers and data scientists and it's done to help you understand the differences in your gameplay other different aim trainers it can tell you how you scored and you can see how you stack up against others but it doesn't tell you about tendencies you have with your aim or anything you do specifically wrong on a common occurrence. If you've already played FIB, you can look at your skills here. It gives you a breakdown from your scouting report. You can even look at your individual performance on different tasks. But let's have a look at skills, for example. And if we go down to ranks and insights, you can see how you rank here. If you go to insights, it'll tell you weaknesses that you generally have. It also tells you if you have like a particular strength. So if you look at weaknesses here, it says left side weakness. This means that I can be able to hit my targets on my right a lot easier than I am on my left. It means that basically I'm just under hitting stuff on my left a lot. It can also tell you about whether you need to change your sensitivity or stuff if you're hitting stuff too early, too late. Let's go into a quick task now and I'll help you understand. The main thing about this as well, it helps you visualize your data. So it provides you with graphs and as well as things like how many targets you've killed, um, how many you missed, how many you've actually hit and things like that. So... We're going to a quick task now real quick. I'm just going to stick with the 9mm just for this purpose. You can choose here whether it's going to be practice only or whether you want the score to actually go to the leaderboard. And that if it goes to the leaderboard, that's what affects your current score on the home screen. So if you go to the home, this is what affects this. I do a lot of practice in, so this one isn't really representative. And I don't really play this much anymore because I've been stuck with Halo 5. But uh, coming to Infinite now, the Halo 5 is over. You know, it's going to be definitely on the grind. But that's what affects this. So let's go back into it. Okay, so now that you can see my score, um, I haven't played this in a while, as I said, so look at my score, it's at 50k. Uh, it's down 2% from my previous scoring. My accuracy was up 1% though. My time to kill remained roughly the same. Uh, this is very good because Halo's a high time to kill game, which is why a lot of uh, keyboard and mouse players are difficult with it. And this is one thing you want to work on a lot, is your strafing and also being able to get your targets killed pretty quickly. So you can see that my accuracy was two better than my worst. That doesn't mean I've actually improved my accuracy. It just means that I had the less worse accuracy than I've had previously. It, but I've also hit it higher before. You can see a breakdown here though, and sort of like what your strengths are. In this case, it's my accuracy. But as you can see, I have like a high time to kill. So basically, it means that I just need to be quicker on my perception and actually reacting to targets. Now, if we go to insights, it'll tell you here. So this one's interesting because it said I had a right side weakness. I'm kind of in a small space right now, just trying to get this video recorded. <laughs> So uh, it's not, you know, reminiscent of what I will actually achieve when if I was doing it properly. For this, I have a right side weakness, which meant that I was struggling to hit enemies on the right. But as you can see here, though, this is the full breakdown. This is where it gets really good. So you can see the number of targets total. This will change based on how long you last and how many you get killed and stuff like that. It tells you sort of error. You can see your precision. 
you can see your sort of breakdown of where you would hit the targets at. And you can also see the number of targets you hit and the number of targets you missed. And then you can also compare it to a, lo to a live global leaderboard against other people. You can see like their time to kill, their score, and uh, things like that. As like I said, this doesn't count towards your actual overall score though, because you need to be able to have it set to the leaderboard, as far as I'm aware. Okay guys, we've looked at the different aim training tasks what their benefits are and which are specifically very good for Halo. We've looked at the issues inherent with Halo as well, like with keyboard and mouse struggling with tracking and the high time to kill and things we can do to work against it with these tasks. As I mentioned earlier though, you can actually download custom playlists. So what I've done is created a playlist of different game modes for you guys to actually work on. This could be a good training routine for yourselves. So I'm going to be using it for myself for Halo Infinite. Um, so to use it and to get it, all you got to do is go to workshop at the bottom of the screen. You then click on everything or on playlist, it's up to you, on the left. And then in the search bar, you want to type in Halo Infinite or my name. And it should show up in the middle of the screen. And then click on it. And then on the right, it'll say download. Mine says play because I've already got it downloaded. However, you just got to click download. Once it's downloaded, then you can play it. Um, to access that, you can go to your home screen. You can go to your playlists and then go down to custom. And you can go to saved playlists. And as you can see... Minus down by here. These are the different game modes contained within it. Reflex shot. Circle shot. Um, and as you can see, look, the target jumps around just like they sort of would in Halo, but obviously it's not shooting you back. And this helps you be able to more accurately work on your aim. So it's not such a... Not so static. It's actually as if it's in-game. Okay, guys, so that's it for me. Thank you for watching. There will be a link to the playlist within the description. Or you can just search it up as shown in the video. So I much appreciate it. I'm going to be doing new videos now on different mice. Uh, more specifically, the ones I own, which are some very typical gaming mice that people use. But also I'm going to be doing a top five for Halo Infinite. So everyone's ready and prepared for when it drops. So thanks for watching, guys. And I shall catch you guys later.